Hello and welcome to the Irish Aesthete. Some time ago on this channel I was talking about a fashion in the 18th century for the Gothic style, that is to say Gothic spelled with a K at the end of it. As I mentioned then, in most instances this kind of Gothic was no more than a superficial form of decoration, just the use of certain motifs on classical buildings as can be seen here at Monastery Revan Abbey in County Kildare given this appearance in the 1760s by architect Christopher Myers. Monastrevan Abbey is clearly a classical house which has been given vaguely gothic arched windows and some crenellations along the roof line. It's what I would call pasteboard gothic and it was by no means the only example of this style here in Ireland. As the 18th century shaded into the 19th, all around the country house owners were looking for a way to transform their homes into something that might just about pass as an old castle. Glynn Castle, County Limerick, is a very good example of this. The core of the present property was built in the early 1790s by Colonel John Bateman Fitzgerald, 23rd Knight of Glynn, who commissioned a large three-storey block adjacent to a 17th century longhouse where the family had previously lived. You can see quite clearly that this is a plain classical building. But in the 1820s, Colonel John's son, the 24th knight, added a sprinkling of battlements to his father's house, making it look not unlike the earlier Monastery Evan Abbey. The 24th knight was also responsible for constructing the miniature castles and toy forts you can see dotted around the perimeter of the Glynn estate. Popularly known as the Knight of the Women, Seemingly, he had these buildings put up to house his various mistresses. So Glynn Castle isn't really a castle at all, as becomes even more apparent once you step into the entrance hall. This is distinguished by wonderful plasterwork on the ceiling, the central section of which is given over to a trompe l'oeil scallop dome containing a series of Etruscan figurative medallions connected by beribboned garlands. As so often here in Ireland, we don't know who was responsible for this work. If we then step into what lies behind, we find a wonderful bifurcating staircase that leads up to the first floor. Pausing only on the return to admire a view of the gardens through this recessed Venetian window with more handsome plasterwork to either side of the arch. Back downstairs in the library, the decoration remains resolutely classical, with absolutely nothing to indicate that the building is called a castle. And the same is true of the adjacent drawing room. Just look at that handsome chimney piece made by Pietro Bossi, an Italian craftsman who worked in Ireland during the final decades of the 18th century and specialised in this beautiful scagliola work. Notice too the frieze in this room, which features garlands of flowers linked by medallions, which, once again, contain classical figures. In other words, the transformation of Glynn Castle is paper thin, a fanciful piece of decorative folly. And in the next episode, we'll look at another house elsewhere in Ireland where a similar job was undertaken, albeit with a bit more effort made to make it genuinely look like a castle. I look forward to seeing you then. Thank you so much for watching the Irish Aesthete. Goodbye. Thank you.